Phoenix Live View allows us to interact with server data and automatically update it on the client each time an event is emitted. This makes it easy to show, manipulate and update data on the client using the server. It's essentially server-side rendering, but with all the power and benefits of Phoenix and Elixir. But the question is, how do we make the pages interactive? That's where JavaScript, and more specifically Alpine.js, really, really shines. In this video tutorial, you're going to learn exactly how to build a model inside a Phoenix Live View application without having to write all the JavaScript logic from scratch. So let's hop on the computer to get started. Okay, so this is the application that we're going to be using in order to show and hide the model. And this is very, something very simple. This is basically a counter that starts at zero. And then once we click on the increase counter, it increases by one. And each time that we click on the decrease counter, it decreases also by one. And this is the code that's producing that result. We have basically the mount function that assigns to the socket the counter of zero on mount. We have the handle event functions that basically pass the event of increase counter and decrease counter. And then it increases or decreases and assigns the new counter to the socket. And this template right over here is basically what handles the decrease counter event. So it basically emits the event to these functions. And then it also does the same thing for the increase. And also it shows what the current counter is. Now, our goal with this tutorial is basically for us to see this piece of code right over here. each time that we click on the button. And then once we click on this cross right here, we want to once again hide it. With the code as is right now, this button doesn't do anything, but our goal again is for it to show the model. And then once we click on the cross for it to close the model. Okay, so the first step is for us to install the Alpine JS library. So that's the tool that we're going to use in order to handle the interactivity in the page. So first of all, you want to CD into the assets and then simply npm install alpine.js. And with alpine.js installed, now you want to come into this app.js file, which is located inside the assets and the JS folder. As you can see, this is the file that we are on in right now. Now, the first thing that we need to do inside this file is to start by importing Alpine from Alpine.js. And then we want to assign this to the window. So here's exactly what I mean by this. You first of all need to write window.alpine equals Alpine because we need to access Alpine inside the Windows object, but it doesn't do it automatically. We need to assign it using this little piece of code right here. And finally, we want to use what we just assigned to basically start Alpine using the function that it provides us. Now that we have imported Alpine, assigned it to the window object and started it, we now want to come into the socket options and add the following code. First of all, write DOM and inside the DOM object add the following. So as you can see, this little piece of code right over here is what's going to connect Phoenix Live View to Alpine.js and allow us to manipulate the DOM using Alpine.js. Now we are almost done. First of all, let's start by uncommenting the model again. And as you can see, the model shows up. Now the first thing that we want to do is come here into the parent div tag and add the following code. What this piece of code basically does is that assigns, it basically assigns the, the state open as false. So basically once the page loads, the, the state of open equals false. And then we want to come to the model and basically add this piece of code right here that says that it only is going to show it if the state is open. So basically if it's false, it's not going to show it. And if it's true, it is going to show it as a, and as you can see, even though we have here the model, it's not showing it right now. 
Now the next and final step is for us to basically add logic that says that once we click on this button right here that shows the counter, we want to open the modal and once we click on this button right here, which is the close uh, SVG, we want to again close the modal. So in order to open the modal, add the following code to this button. And what this basically does is it says that once we click on the button, it basically sets the open state to true. And now inside the application, if we click on the show counter button, it shows us the modal with the, the current counter value. So as you can see here, it says that the counter is currently zero. And finally, we want to add the ability to close the model. So we're going to do basically what we did right over here. So we're going to copy this code. We're going to paste it in here. And instead of letting this be true, we'll set it as false. And as you can see now, we're able to basically show the counter and again, close the model to hide the model. And if we come in here and we, for example, increase the counter to eight, each time that we show the counter inside the model, it shows what the current counter is. As you can see, it's very simple to create JavaScript interactions on a Phoenix Live View page without having to write complex code from scratch. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, let me know in the comments exactly what you liked about it and subscribe for more content like this.